Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little watercolor for you and it's a very fond memory that I'm actually going to be painting. I um, have always had a love affair with the Norfolk Broads up in Norfolk in the UK and I've been there on many holidays with my parents as a child and also taking my children there as a young adult. I also frequented those broads on many occasions. Now, I hadn't been for so many years, and a few years ago, I hit that magical big birthday, and my wife has secretly had planned a trip to rekindle my uh, love of the Norfolk broads, and we went to Hickling. Now, Hickling is also an area uh, that is very, very um, close to my heart, not just because it's a Norfolk Broads, but one of my superheroes of painting, a gentleman, you've heard me speak of him before, Edward Sego, used to have his boat uh, on part of the Broads and he used to go to different places. And the place I'm going to be painting tonight is St. Bennett's Abbey. And uh, he made that his own in many of his paintings and I want to, I'm not going to even try and get close to doing a job that he would have done on it, but at least hopefully at the end of this you'll have understood uh, the area and my love affair for this area and um, yeah, well let's dive straight in and see what happens. Huh? Okay. So first and foremost I put a very very low horizon in because on the photograph there's a lot of grass and I didn't need to put all of that into this image. You'll also notice that I put uh, the whole of the building much closer in proportion to the picture plane. It's what this painting's about and I didn't need to make it so far away. So I brought the whole thing much closer. The photograph is just an overall picture of the scene, which is great for reference, but it didn't serve me well for what I wanted to do about the building itself and St. Bennett's Abbey. So this is the gate entrance to the old abbey, which was across the river on the other bank. And this was one of the gate entrances. And in their wisdom, the Victorians, I believe, built this uh, pump mill uh, into the faces of different facets of this wall that was left. Which is a great shame, but it does make it also an iconic uh, building to be found on the edges of the banks of the Norfolk Broads. Now, I'm putting the background in. It's very, very general not too much i've got this wall with the uh, castle top to it uh, there is a name i can't say it so i marked it all out to get the right amount and the thickness of the wall and then just jotted in and filled in the little spaces that i needed to to give it three dimensions and that was important to get it right because somebody who looks at this scene who knows the mill itself and the abbey gate will be able to tell if it's right or wrong so you do need to pay a lot of attention to getting uh, key features of the place about right. Generalizations like some of the trees in the background are not such a big worry. Now I'm coming back to the three-sided structure of the gate entrance and also don't forget the countryside that looks through that gate entrance. Now we're looking at the color and the color I'm using are basically a little bit of cobalt with cerulean blue. I'm using wet onto dry paper. I'm not pre-wetting this to start with. I'm letting more moisture in the blue as it's on the underneath so it cascades down into a lighter color. And I'm coming down with a heavier, sort of somewhat gray, a little bit of um, magenta went into that just to uh, give that a more of a stormy or threatening it's not that threatening, but it's way off in the distance. But it's just, it definitely adds weight. And it adds weight to give me some light colors and, and work lovely with the greens and the distant greens of the trees and the fields. But I'm trying to avoid the light side of the mill itself because that's quite warm. And I don't want that to be contaminated by a blue color underneath. So I've kept it to one side. Where I have encroached the mill, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a lot darker, so that really isn't a problem. Now you can see me coming through the um, darker parts of the sky up in the top. I'm changing it slightly to the photograph, 
uh, you'll notice that but I'm trying to leave some of the white spaces that are around the blue uh, cloud you know sort of the lower parts of the clouds and I've just used a bit of water damp water on the brush just to soften some of the effects of that you can see here in the sky that I was a little bit too late with that blue I changed my mind on what I wanted to do so I had to rework that and re-wet that and work quite hard it was a mistake I'm going to put my hands up to it and say it was a mistake I should have planned that a little better I didn't but I think that the uh, work through the uh, repair, as you can see me doing now, worked quite well. And I think in the final image, you don't see too much of a problem. But beware, the, you know, the moral to this story is if you're going to plan it, plan it properly and execute it according to your plan. Don't go in so far and then change your mind and alter the whole situation. But you can see I've added and I've dried and I've added a bit more. I just felt that this guy that I'm putting in now just worked a little better for the whole scene. It sort of sweeps from one side and curves up and across the image and gives this sort of windblown and open expanse of flatlands, which of course this area of the Norfolk Broads really is. It's quite flat. There are hills in the background because this to access St. Bennett's, you have to go um, up uh, along the main road to the little village of Ludham, and then you come down a, a small track which goes right past the um, house that Edward Seago actually lived in, and uh, it's a fantastic place. I've never actually been in there. I know some of my friends have had that opportunity uh, with the lady who... Uh, owns it now and um, I just yeah it's called the Dutch house but it is a beautiful building and the gardens I should imagine are fantastic but you have to pass that on your way down to uh, the lower levels and out onto the track where you will find uh, St Bennett's Abbey and I can understand therefore why um, Mr. Sego made this his own and he made such a fantastic motif for this in many of his works. I'm putting those warms in. The first warm colours went in on the mill. They're drying while I work on the darker side of the shadowy side of the wall itself. Not forgetting all that stuff in the background. It's got to go in. The first colours of the shade on the little bit of walling. I can't work out why you got that ca uh, that sort of castle uh, sort of top to this wall because the wall is very, very low. There must have been a reason for it. I don't know. I'd love to know if anyone has a, a sort of historic um, angle on this building and knows a lot more than I do, then put it in the comments. I'd love to know a little bit more about it. And it is just uh, eye-catching. And it really stands out on the banks of the uh, the river purely and simply because it's all set on a bend so from whichever way you approach it this is just an iconic shape um, before you anyway I'm digressing and moving on I'm just adding layer upon layer on different angles of the darkness on this building going back in on this little bit of wall just to strengthen the darks against those lighter greens uh, beyond and it's all very good because it adds a fantastic contrast to the whole thing. Now the very first of the darks going in on this mill. And this is what's really going to pump out that sky and set this whole building out in the whole of the landscape. And it's what makes, to me, the image so beautiful. Looking for all those little bits of shapes and darks and bits of contrast that I can add to this painting as I move forward. I'm lifting a little bit out on there. I use that uh, sort of slightly stiffer bristle brush to take some of the pigment out. It's spread a little bit too far around the edge of the wall, but allowing the parts to dry and putting the darks in. Now, this is really interesting. I love this little bit of shadow that I was able to put in. It gives that sort of cylinder feel, that curvature to the wall of the mill building itself. Now I'm going in with a very, very cool color, very cool greens into the distant line of trees uh, right the way through the background. There is a little bit more of a feel, but then again, there are 
uh, more trees to put in and the thing is that some of those are quite an iconic shape um, and you do need to make sure that where there are these shapes you do have to observe them now i'm coming in with some finer detail as we're sort of coming to the end of the picture in many respects we we're not actually at the end but you know we're sort of honing in on the what i call the i's and t's we're getting there we're sort of putting those final bits of details in uh deepening areas of dark that need it and paying careful attention to where we need to add weight to this picture and give the support to the building in terms of the shadow and that creates a wonderful contrast on all the lighter sides that uh, on the left hand side as or over my left hand shoulder from where I was standing and I took great pains to sort of try and find one of the positions from one of uh, Edward Seago's paintings and stand almost or as close as I could work it out in exactly the same position that he did and I've got to say I'm a, just a, 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 a huge fan and you know this man uh, just set the, the way forward for British landscape painting for a long long time and yet sadly was pretty much shunned by the art establishment when he was alive but um, it, it's a great shame but he just was such a magical artist and if you don't know anything else about him i suggest you turn on your computers and search for the name and just study his work both in oil and in watercolor he was an absolute master anyway i'm digressing yet one more time i'm just putting some more field details in and beyond to give this sort of distance and scale a little bit of a darker green to create a contour because there is actually a dip in the field that's beyond this castle or this sort of mill because there was a lot of cattle and a deeper track that uh, people were walking along now i'm using very dry brush to suggest the long grasses in the foreground i don't want to put detail in i just really want to put in uh, just enough detail and darks and lights to make it work now I decided to go back in with a much heavier color on the sky. I could still see too much of that blue running through, so I needed to um, get rid of that. But I also felt that by doing so, it would aid me and make this sky just that little bit better in terms of threatening. It adds weight to the top, and that holds in all that building in the foreground color as well, those sort of... Uh, greens that have been dry brushed and scratched across that lovely surface and i've got to say that that surface is on a 300 pound heavyweight 300 pound 640 gsm saunders waterford paper really great for doing this job but i think at the end of this you'll see that i actually managed to get rid of that quite well and the sky did work out and there you go. I've, I'm pretty much done. I've enjoyed it and it's fun. I put a few birds in, a few crows in just to give the little bit of uh, pastoral uh, countryside effect and feeling to this mill. Make them random. Don't make them equidistant. Catch you all in the next one. I really enjoy this. Hope you enjoy it too. Bye bye. Okay, guys. Well, it was a bit of a mammoth task. And because of that, you've only seen the um, uh, time-lapse version, I'm afraid. And uh, I've got to say, during the course of the painting, there was a bit of a hiccup with the sky. And you'll notice that it's very different at the finish than where it started. So I did have a problem. I Hopefully, I've got out of it quite well. Could have been better. And, um, and hopefully, you've got something from it and enjoyed the process uh, painting alongside with me. So with that said, if you have, uh, give it the thumbs up and click that like button. That always helps me. It tells the uh, YouTube algorithms that the video is a nice video for people to watch and enjoy. And so it helps promote me. And with that said, uh, if you've got friends who don't know about my channel and you think that they would enjoy the work that I produce, then please share this video with them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it and I certainly would. And above all, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe to the channel. 
again, it tells YouTube that it's a channel that is worthy of help and promotion. And all I'm trying to do is grow the channel so that I can maybe at some point earn a few pennies from it that will help me uh, create more content worthy for you to watch and enjoy and learn from. And on that note, if you do want to help support the channel more immediately, you can nip over to my Patreon page. On there, you'll see so much more on offer, various tiers from direct links at a higher end to watching normal videos and content from me on the lower end. Each and every one of you would have access to my uh, community page on Facebook where we can have direct access to each other and help each other and talk things through with you contact all these things so it's worth taking a look at and all the details to that are in the description below so have a look at that and in the meantime everybody uh, I just want you all to stay safe we're in harrowing times around the world and um, everybody in one way and another is being effective some not so bad some really horrendously being affected and my heart goes out to each and every one of you. Whether I know you or whether I don't know you, stay safe. Happy painting, keep those brushes going, and don't forget that it, the Patreon and all the stuff that I'm doing is trying to help you, certainly in isolation. So catch you all next Friday or before. All the best, take care for now, bye-bye.